The M1 Mac Mini is one of my favorite devices to come out in 2020. It's small, it's powerful, it has plenty of I.O. ports, looks super clean, and it's the cheapest way to get into the Mac OS ecosystem. It's a wonderful option if you're working from home or if you want a compact desktop setup for school. But to truly get the most out of your Mac Mini, you're going to want to add some accessories. What's up guys, Sagi here, and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're going to kit out the brand new M1 Mac Mini with some of my favorite accessories. We already know that the M1 with its SOC or system on chip design integrates the CPU, GPU, and neural engine. We know that it's fast and we know that it's efficient. So let's build out a complete system and I'll also show you how you can easily save hundreds of dollars. Now, when you buy a Mac mini, you get a Mac mini and a power cord. That's everything that's in the box. That's really not a lot different than buying a traditional desktop. So the first thing we're gonna need to add is a keyboard. Since the design is super clean and elegant, I wanted to go with a keyboard that would fit in with that sleek look and feel. And I chose the Magic Wireless Keyboard with Numeric Pad in Space Gray. I've always loved the design of this board. It's minimalistic, it's low profile, and I think it fits perfectly with the design of the Mac Mini. Now the keys are light and bouncy and they're comfortable to type on. They don't have the same feel or sound as my mechanical keyboard, but in this case, I sacrificed some ergonomics for form. It's a full-size board, so it has a complete number pad on the right, and this way you don't need to add a separate numeric pad like with the older models. And these make it so much easier to work with spreadsheets or even just using keyboard shortcuts. You also have full-size arrow keys, so no more of those half-size up and down keys. The board communicates with the Mac Mini via Bluetooth, and it comes with a lightning to USB cable, which you can use for charging, and you will need it for the initial pairing. And the built-in lithium ion battery lasts for about a month, and since I still have a lightning cable for the <coughs> iPhone 12 and the iPad 8, I can make this work. Now, if you're looking for a different aesthetic and you want a mechanical keyboard that will look great with this setup, check out the Corsair K70 Mark II SE, which comes in silver or you can go with the RK TK68 dual mode blue switches. Now this is a compact and wireless mechanical keyboard with clicky keys, which I absolutely love. Like to me, there's something so soothing about the keys clacking, but I also work in a room alone, so I don't have to worry about bothering other people. And here, just listen to this. I love that sound. I don't know, I love it. I know some people don't, but I really like it. Now, if you're already gonna leave a comment, add this to the end. And if not, just put in the comments question, clicky or not clicky? I wanna know what you guys like. And for a mouse, I chose my favorite mouse right now, which is the Logitech MX Master 3 for Mac. A lot of people like sleep on their choice of mouse and they just use whatever is laying around. But a high quality ergonomic mouse is so important. I mean, you're gonna use this thing for years and it's definitely a device that I think is worth investing in. I absolutely love this entire line of mice from Logitech. I've been using them for over 10 years. This is the latest one. And just like with previous models, it's extremely comfortable. I can control my main workstation, the Mac mini, and my iPad Air 4 with one mouse by just clicking this little button right here and you'll see it will alternate between device one two, and three. This particular model has two versions. So this one is for the Mac and it's designed to specifically match the space gray. And it's a perfect partner with the Magic Wireless keyboard. It costs around a hundred bucks. And if that's outside your budget, I would definitely look at the older MX Master 2S or even the original MX Master. Those are both great mice and at a lower cost. Now, if you want a smaller and more compact mouse, you can check out the Logitech Pebble, which you can get for around 30 bucks. It's a completely different design, and unlike the MX Master 3, the clicks are like virtually silent. And it's a good choice if you wanna keep your entire setup as quiet as possible, and if you like to handle a smaller mouse. Now, before I move on to the money-saving accessory, if you like what you've seen so far and you've gotten value from this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It helps the video and the channel, and it lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest Apple gear and tutorials. All right, so now let's see if we can save some money with another accessory. And 
You might be thinking like, how am I gonna save money by buying something else? I'm gonna tell you how, don't worry. Now, one of the only issues that I have with the Mac Mini is that it's not upgradable, meaning that whatever internal storage and RAM configuration you choose, that's what you're gonna have for as long as you keep this device. Now, if you watch that video right there, I talk about why I think the average user may want to upgrade the RAM, but not necessarily the internal storage. And I don't wanna repeat the whole thing, so I'll also link to it at the end of this video. And my next accessory is an external SSD drive. Now, whatever amount of internal storage you're gonna choose for your Mac Mini is already gonna be extremely fast. And we don't wanna take a significant performance hit by using a spinning hard drive. And there are a lot of excellent choices on the market like the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Samsung T7. And both of them are significantly less expensive than the upgraded internal storage that Apple offers. Now, I get that you're not getting the same level of performance, but like I said, go watch that other video. For less money than you would spend on upgrading to two terabytes, you could actually add six terabytes of Samsung T7 drives. And those drives are also portable, so you can use them on your iPads and laptops. This way, if you're working on files with your main workstation, and then you wanna go off location, you can still use the same hard drive. And again, you can access them from multiple devices. Now, the next accessory that I choose to use is a USB hub. And there are a lot of like desktop mounted hubs, but I actually like this portable USB hub because I run a cable under my desk and then I have it mounted with this like sticky Velcro so that it's right at the tip of the desk. And this way it's, it's right where I need it and I don't have to reach to the back of the machine. The Mac Mini already has a ton of I.O. ports as far as quantity. So going from left to right, we've got the power button, a power cord input, then a gigabit Ethernet port, two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports with support for DisplayPort, Thunderbolt 3, USB 3.1 Gen 2. We have an HDMI 2.0 port, two USB-A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But like I said, I don't wanna reach the back of the Mac Mini every time I wanna plug and unplug a device, and I don't want cables just laying loose on my desk. So like I said, I'll run a cable under my desk and have this mounted so I have very quick access and I can do things like offload media from my camera using the SD or micro SD card slots. And going back to how I use my different SSDs, so I have one that's mounted just in the back. I never take it off, so it's always connected to the Mac Mini. But then I have another one that I use with my iPads. That one I just connect to this USB hub whenever I need it. And when I'm done using it, I just unplug the cable so it's ready to go to my iPad Air 4, for example. All right, so moving on, we need to talk about sound. And I was really surprised that the Mac Mini has a built-in speaker. When I first set it up, I wasn't expecting to hear any audio and I just wanted to see if playing YouTube in 4K wirelessly was gonna give it any trouble. I wasn't expecting sound to come up, but sure enough, there it was. Now, it's definitely not a great speaker. I'm not even sure if it's a good speaker. And regardless, it's never gonna be able to compete with actual dedicated speakers. So I went with the same speakers that I have on my main workstation, which are the Audio Engine A2 Plus. They're small, they provide excellent sound, they work both wired via USB or Bluetooth aptX if you have a compatible device. Again, they sound great and for the money, they're a great value. And I'm always interested in testing out different speakers, so if you have a set that you really love, let me know in the comment section. Now remember I said that the Mac Mini also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and I just got the Drop slash THX Panda wireless headphones. I've been using them for a couple of days and really enjoyed them. They're a collaboration between Drop and THX. They have planar ribbon drivers. They use a Bluetooth 5.0 Qualcomm 5124 chipset with support for LDAC, aptX HD, aptX adaptive, AAC, and SBC. So you're pretty much good to go if you're looking for a high-end Bluetooth audio codec. To go along with the 55 millimeter drivers, we also have a THX AAA amplifier. And as far as sound signature, these are a little bit different than a lot of the headphones that you see on the market because there's no DSP or digital signal processing. And you're hearing the music or the sounds as the artist or the mixing engineer intended you to. I like that I can use these both wired and wirelessly and the controls 
are this little joystick, which I didn't really think I would like at first, but I end up liking it a lot better than touch controls because with touch controls, I can't always activate them. Sometimes I'm like either hitting it in the wrong spot. I don't know. But with this little controller, I can do volume up and down. I can go back or forward in songs. I can answer and hang up phone calls, or I can even summon Siri. Now the ear cups are a very thick foam wrapped in a breathable protein leather, which makes them comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Overall, these are excellent wireless headphones and definitely let me know if you have any other questions about them. Now the other headphones that I use are the AirPods Pro and I've been using the original AirPods for years and I absolutely love these. Like more than any other headphone, they fit my ears so great and I barely feel like I'm wearing them. But a lot of you guys have been telling me that I need to try out the AirPods Pro and you got me to go over that comfort concern and I picked up a pair. Well, here's the only problem I've really had with the AirPods Pro so far. They kind of make my original AirPods sound really bad. These are still comfortable and they have noise cancellation and much better audio quality. I easily pair them with the Mac mini and I can now keep these while I'm transitioning from my iPhone to the iPad and to the Mac mini, which is great. So these are the headphones that I've been using with the Mac mini while I'm streaming music or content. And speaking of streaming, the Mac mini supports Wi-Fi 6, which I was super excited about. Like if you watched my ultimate home office setup video up there, you saw that I upgraded my original Orbi to the Wi-Fi 6 Orbi. And now I'm able to set up the Mac mini anywhere I want in the house and still get super fast Wi-Fi. If you don't know about the Orbi, it's a mesh network. It's absolutely awesome. And the original Orbi is pretty much the product that started my YouTube channel. It's basically a router and a satellite, but it creates a single network that covers up to about 5,000 square feet at speeds of up to six gigabits per second. Even the older model is great and it's worked for me for years, but I have a ton of connected devices and here I'm adding another one with the Mac mini. So I made the move and I'm super happy with the new model. All right, so these are some of my favorite accessories for the M1 Mac mini. And if you have some other suggestions, please let me know in the comment section and maybe we'll put together a part two. I'll put links in the description to where you can buy the M1 Mac mini, as well as all the accessories that I mentioned in this video. And if you buy anything using those links, you help support my channel for free. So thank you in advance. I really hope that I was able to give you a good overview of my favorite Mac mini accessories. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, tweet it, share it. And if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.